One, two, one, two, one, two. town today. Amen. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for all the Sunday school classes that are having Sunday school. One of these days we're going to get back to normal. So just keep on doing what you're doing. And as I've told people, if you don't feel uh, comfortable coming, you do what you need to do. Be sure and get a bulletin. There's a lot of announcements in it. Let me just highlight one or two of them. Uh, don't forget, this. there's another service this afternoon in the park at 5 o'clock, so don't forget that. Women's on Mission will be meeting Wednesday uh, on the 9th at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. 
and then each Wednesday in September from 9 o'clock in the morning to late in the evening. The building is open. The lights will be on. It's a time of prayer. Just come any time that you can come. If you want to come kneel at the altars, if you want to come and just sit in the pews and pray, but come and pray for revival, pray for our country, pray that God's will will be done and His name will be magnified. So be sure, remember all these announcements, get right in your place, and uh, we appreciate your faithfulness. Thank you so much. We have a thank you card. It says, thank you, church family, for the gifts, the prayers, the cards, phone calls after the death of my mother. We love you all, Roy and Dorothy Richardson, and we ask you to continue to pray for this family. Pray for a family. I had the funeral yesterday uh, up in Chatsworth, uh, Brother Kenneth Looney went to be at the Lord. These were great Christian friends, great Christians. Pray for them. Pray for others who have had funerals this week and for all those that are sick. We're going to have a word of prayer. How many have an unspoken request of prayer this morning? Aren't you glad God hears us when we pray? The Word of God teaches us to bring our needs to Him, uh, to pray. I've been... My, some of my daily Bible reading this week has been in the Old Testament when they offered the sacrifices and the prayers and God gave them specific instructions and what God was saying, bring them to me and it's not about you, but it's all about me and I'm grateful today it's not. We're going to stand. Brother Tim, would you come and lead us in prayer? Let's stand together. Let's worship God today. We've got several people out, several of our praise choruses out today. But we're going to worship God anyway, aren't we? Amen. Amen. We're going to give Him praise. We're going to give Him glory. Brother Tim, lead us as we pray. Let's pray. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you, Lord, the only way we know how, Lord. And that's through the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord God, that set us free, Lord, from the bonds of sin, Lord God, that saved us, Lord, from an awful place called hell, Lord God. We just want to come to you, Lord, just putting our trust, Lord God, totally in you, Lord God. Lord, this is the Sunday school lesson said, let us always be found, Lord God, putting you first and foremost in our lives, Lord God. Knowing, Lord God, that if we put our trust, Lord God, in you alone, Lord God, that you're able, Lord God. We know, Lord, that you're an able God, able to accomplish things, Lord God, that may seem impossible, Lord God, with men, Lord God. But we know, Lord, that your word teaches, Lord, that all things are possible, Lord, through you, Lord. So let each and every one of us, Lord God, just have that faith of a mustard seed, Lord God, and just come to you, Lord God, and seek you out, Lord. Lord God, in all matters of life, Lord God, that we may be able, Lord God, to walk, Lord God, upright, Lord, and righteous, Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord God. We just ask, Lord, that you just touch each and every heart, Lord God, this morning, Lord God, that we just turn, Lord, and worship you, Lord God. Lord, just be with the preacher, Lord God, as he breaks that bread of life, Lord God. Just let us, each and every one, Lord God, just take of it, Lord, and eat, Lord God, that we might be strengthened, Lord God, throughout the days. Lord God, go with us, Lord, as we come, Lord, and worship you, Lord God, this morning, Lord. And we just want to praise you, Lord God, for all things. In Christ's holy name, Lord, we do pray. Amen. And all the church said... All right, let's worship God today. Let's uh, sing out of our hearts and give him praise. God is on the throne. God is still in control. He's in control of your life. Be obedient to him today. Amen. Amen. All right, sing along with us. All the world is bright and cheery.
for this next one with us if you will amen how many of you feel blessed today all right sing that you're blessed how many of you are thankful so thankful for your blessings today amen all right you can be seated we want you to keep worshiping with us this next song you know faith faith's not just a state of mind it's not just a state of mind it's a continual process of life and trying to win victory over worry and we know that god doesn't want us to worry the bible said that without faith it's impossible to please god and it said that uh, the Bible said that whatever's not of faith is of sin. And I'm thankful that through Jesus Christ we can have that victory today over the worry in my life. You might have something today that's got you worried, that's got you torn up inside. Give it to God today. Give it to Him. The songwriter said, Whatever comes in life, we can trust in the Lord God. He's already been there. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're going through tomorrow. So let's just give him that trust today. Get over our worry and win victory over fear. 
story about the writer of this next song, next song, Horatio Spafford. He penned the words to this song while he was on a voyage across the Atlantic Ocean from the U.S. to England many years ago. He was on the way over there because he had received some tragic news. You see, his wife and his children had left for England a few days earlier, and they were going over there for a ministry-related event. And uh, while on the way, their vessel struck another vessel. And there was a tragedy at sea. They killed 200 some odd people. And Horatio Spafford and his wife, they lost four daughters that day. The wife sent a telegram back to him and she said, I'm saved alone. So you can imagine the heartache and the pain upon his heart as he sailed across that sea where just a few days earlier he'd lost four daughters. And he began to pen the words of this song. He said, Lord, if peace is like a river in my life and things are going great, or if it's rolling like sea billows, like mighty waves, tossing me here and throw, here and there, still, Lord, it's well with my soul because of the peace and the trust I have in you. Can we have that in our lives today? Amen. I want you to sing this song with us. One of my favorites. And just think about Horatio. As he penned these words, what trust, what faith, what knowledge. He'd been there with the Lord, hadn't he? When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, 
It's a good time for Miss Doris to come and sing a special, one of my favorites. He's coming back, as we said, the Midnight Cry. And it's close. 
closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call at the midnight cry. of graves but as we laid that man's ashes in the grave I thought one of these days there's going to be a sound in the eastern sky there's going to come a cloud floating by and God's going to say son step out on that cloud and he's going to say to Gabriel get your trumpet and blow the trumpet 
And I want to tell you something's going to take place on this earth. All those, all those tombstones on that hillside and everywhere else where people have been buried that trusted Christ as their Savior, brother, that graveyard's going to get disturbed. And then they're going to rise. And my father-in-law used to say, God may give them just a moment to kick a little dirt back in the grave and say, oh, grave, where's your victory? And if we're here alive and remain, we're going to lose hold of this earth. And we're going up to be at the Lord. Isn't that a hope today? Do you have that hope in your heart? If you don't, you can have it today. And at any time in this service that you feel God's dealing with your heart, it won't disturb me at all. I'll always take time out to lead somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't it good to be a Christian? Do you know that you know you're saved by the grace of God this morning? Amen. If you do, give him praise. Give him glory. Amen. What a Savior. What a Savior. Well, we continue today in the book of Acts. Last week, I talked to you from chapter number 3, where Peter and John went up to the temple to pray. And there was a lame man there and that had been begging. He had been there most of his life. And he asked Peter and John to give him alms. And Peter said, such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. The man looked to receive something, and he really did receive something. He got strength. He got strength in those ankle bones that had been crippled all of his life. And he started leaping and praising God. You know, some of this church crowd of this day would have thought he is a fanatic. They think we're fanatic here at Newtown because we raise our hands, because we say amen and praise the Lord. Think what you may, I'm going to give God praise. Amen. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor. Now, in chapter 3 and 4, you know the story of how that uh, Peter and John were thrown into prison, how that God delivered them. It didn't stop their mouth. Peter got out and kept on preaching. He is one of those who couldn't shut up. And he preached the word of God to them. And uh, he preached about Jesus Christ. And he preached in the power of the Spirit. Now in chapter number 4 and verse number 31 is our scripture reading today. As you turn in your Bibles, if you don't have your Bible, it's here on the screen. And as soon as you find your place, if you would stand in honor to the reading of God's Word. Chapter 4 of the book of Acts, verse number 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the Word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, for they had all things in common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the price of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, brought the money, <clears throat> and laid it at the apostles' feet. Father, I pray today you'll bless your word to our hearts. Thank you, God, for giving us a full copy of the word of God from beginning to ending. Thank you, God, that your word was inspired. By holy men of old, they become the instrument to pen the Word of God. 
And Father, I pray that we will be instruments of believing the Word of God and instruments of praise and interest, interest, instruments of magnifying the Word of God. Now, Father, I place myself in your hands today. I need your touch. I need your strength. I need your anointing because without it, I'm nothing. I pray the Spirit of God speak through me today. God, I pray you'll touch me mentally. May I think the right thoughts. Touch me physically. May I have the strength to deliver the Word of God. But above all, I pray that you'll touch me spiritually. I pray the preaching of the Word of God will be anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit as Peter was after the day of Pentecost, and many were added to the church. Now, you know the need of every heart that's here today. You know, God, the need of that lost person. You know the need of that Christian that's going through a battle. I pray in Jesus' name that you'll lift him up. May God's name be magnified and glorified. In Christ's name I pray. And all the church said, thank you, and you may be seated. I want to talk to you this morning for the next few minutes as we look at the Word of God on what a New Testament church challenges its members to be. The Bible teaches us that Jesus loved the church so much that he gave himself for it. He died on the cross of Calvary. The Word of God teaches us he ever lived to make intercession for the church. And one day he's going to come back and take the church home to heaven forever. And the Bible said, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, if Jesus cared enough to hang on a cross and die for the church, to suffer in agony and pain, Jesus was laid in a borrowed tomb. And on the third and appointed morning, he was resurrected he ever lives to make intercession. He cares that much for the church. We should love the church enough to be a part of it by belonging to God's church through the new birth and that we're saved. Now, after we're saved, according to the Scripture, the Bible teaches us that we ought to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. Baptism does not save you Baptism says that you have been saved, that it's an open confession that I've trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and my personal Lord. I'm buried with Him in baptism. I'm raised to walk in the newness of life. Baptism is just an open testimony, a public testimony of the inward change that's been in your life. And I believe that every person that is saved ought to be a member, ought to be baptized and be a member of a local fellowship where you can come and worship God. I believe that that local fellowship ought to be supported and sustained by our presence day after day, by our participation. I believe we ought to be a part of the church, don't you? I believe we ought to be active in the church for the glory of God. And I believe that a part of our possessions, as we see these early church members, a part of our possessions ought to belong to God. Now, my church is a vital part of my life. I love my Savior, and He loves the church, so I ought to love what He loves. Amen? He loved the church enough to give Himself for it, I will love myself, the church, enough to give myself to be a part of my church and to glorify God. My church is my life, and I have a vision for my church, and I want to invite you to share in that vision for God's glory and His kingdom work. I love my church. I pray you love your church. I pray that if you're not a member of of a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Bible-practicing, God-glorifying church, I want to urge you to get there. 
I praise God for Newtown Baptist Church. I, as far as I'm concerned, and if you're a member of another church, you ought to feel this way. If you don't, you need to get into one that you do. As far as I'm concerned, Newtown is the best church on the face of this earth. Could I get a witness to that? Amen. All right. I love my church. Now, I love my church, and what should my church do to challenge me to be the member that I ought to be? Number one, I believe my church ought to inspire me to worship. I believe when I come into this church, there ought to be an atmosphere. There ought to be a spirit that challenges me to worship the God of heaven. The Bible said in verse 31 of our text, And when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now, I believe when you come to church, you ought to have a bold spirit about you. We don't have anything to be ashamed about, do we? We're saved by the grace of God. We ought to be the proudest group of people on the face of God's good earth. So we gather to worship, to glorify God. When we come to worship, it's not about the preacher. It's not about the praise team. It's not about the choir. It's not about the congregation. But ladies and gentlemen, when we come to worship, it's all about Him. It's all about God. We're to worship Him. Genuine worship will inspire the worshiper. It's more than just singing a few th songs, going through some ritual, and enduring a sermon. It's more than that. It's experiencing the presence of God, acknowledging His authority in our life, and worshiping Him as our Creator. Could I repeat that again? It's experiencing the presence of God. Have you felt the presence of God here this morning? If you have, say amen. 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 God is here, isn't he? That song says he is here. Hallelujah. Praise his name. And he is. It's experiencing in the presence of God. It's acknowledging the authority of God. He's over my life. I'm not in charge anymore. He is. He took charge of my life. When Jesus came into my heart, and then I worship Him as my Creator. What did God create me for? He created me to give praise and to give glory and honor to the glory of God. My vision for my church is a place of spiritual worship where your soul magnifies God, where the glory of God's presence comes down on your heart, where you know that you've been in the presence of God. Do you leave church saying, boy, wasn't it good to be there today? Do you leave church and you tell people next week, boy, we had a spiritual service. God was there. Worship is when I take my eyes off everything else and put them on God. Listen, we should not come into this church today carrying the luggage of this past week. We should not come into this church carrying the luggage of our work, of our home. We ought to come into this church saying, God, I'm placing my eyes on you and you alone. You can take care of all those things. I want to tell you, there's been some things that in my life this week I'd rather not happen, but I'm not going to let them hinder me from worshiping God. My church inspires me to worship God. You know, the Bible teaches us we're the light of the world. God has saved us by His grace. Somebody said that during the week, we're thousands of little lights trying to light up the world. When we gather together on Sunday or whenever for corporate worship, we gather together, we become one great light, one big light, and we worship the light of glory, and we get recharged, and then we go out the next week to be a little light shining for Jesus out there in the world. That's what I want to happen. 
I want us to be lights for God out there during the week. And when we come to church here on Sunday morning, we can sing songs like, I am blessed. I am blessed. We can sing songs like, it is well with my soul. Aren't you glad it's well today? God has already taken care of everything. God has made it well. Now, I raise this question today. Does our worship honor God? Does it inspire? Does it uplift? Does it transform us? I want to be a different person when I leave here today. Not that I'm going to get saved again. I'm saved for eternity. But I want to be up the ladder a little more spiritually when I leave out of this place. Does your worship inspire others and draw others closer to an encounter with Jesus Christ? You know, when visitors come into this church, I want them, number one, I want them to be welcome. And they are welcome, aren't they, New Town? Say amen. Amen. This is not us for no more. I want to tell you, we've all got, always got room for others. And I want to inspire people. When they come here, I want them to leave saying, God's in that place. Those people worship the Lord of glory. You know, we're to let God know how much we appreciate Him. The Word of God said in Psalm 29 and 2, Give unto the Lord the glory due His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Worship. It's a beautiful thing to worship God. It's a wonderful thing to give praise to God. Somebody said this. We have many times view God as the prompter and the leader as the performer and the congregation as the audience. But I believe it's this way. The leader, Brother Jeff stood up here and led us this morning. I'm st standing up here trying to lead. I want to be a prompter. The congregation are the performers. We're to worship. And God is the audience. We're to glorify God in the beauty of holiness our goal is not to please ourselves, but it's to please the God of glory. Amen? To give Him praise. To give Him glory. When we worship, we ought to be inspired to have a sense of awe in our life. I was reading in the book of Isaiah, and I know all of you have read that scripture, in Isaiah chapter 6, where the Bible said King Uzziah had died. And Isaiah saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up. And the seraphims, there with the six wings, they give God praise. They cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The word of God said that the, the doors of the post were moved. And uh, God came down and uh, the, the smoke filled the house. Then Isaiah said, Woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I want to tell you, when you get your eyes on God, you're going to be changed. Then the Word of God said, One of the seraphims came, and uh, they had a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon Isaiah's mouth. He touched his lips. He said, Thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Aren't you glad God will forgive us? Oh, I want to tell you, the Word of God said uh, in the book of Psalms, I read this week, I was sitting back here in the office, and let me, let me just give you a a verse of scripture. I don't, I don't believe that you always all just flip your Bible open and read wherever it falls open, but sometime you need to. It said, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Now listen to this. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? 
but there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. Aren't you glad you have a God that will forgive you? Have you ever had somebody that will say, I'll never forgive him? Have you ever had somebody like that? I hate him. Aren't you glad God says, even though you don't walk according to my will, even though you get out of my will and you sin and you do wrong, God said, if you'll confess, I will forgive. Now, I want to tell you, that'll bring worship. That'll bring praise to God. It brings a sense of awe. But not only that, it brings a sense of joy. The Word of God said in Psalm 100, let me, uh, let me give you again what the Word of God said. In the book of Psalm 100, the Bible said this, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let's make a joyful noise to Him this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. I'm glad we have spiritual singing. Thank you, Doris, for singing that beautiful song about the coming of the Lord at the midnight cry. Know you that the Lord, He is God. It is He that has made us. I want to tell you, I didn't just happen to be, but I'm a divine creation of God Almighty. God created me. That's the reason I do not believe in abortion. And I do not believe that any politician that puts his approval on abortion, and I'll say this again and again, and people may hate me for it, but they can. But any politician that believes in abortion is wrong, and anybody else that does. Amen. Because we are the creation of God. And it's not we ourselves, we're His people, and the sheep of His pastor, and He's our shepherd. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. Have you thanked God this morning? Have you just give God praise here in His gates? Give Him and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. I just say, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that's within me, bless his holy name. Then the word of God said, for the Lord is good. Hadn't God been good to you? For his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. What a God we serve today. We, as we worship, it ought to bring a sense of joy into our hearts. The early believers, the Word of God said, they were all together, they were all filled, and they found their strength in participation which is with each other, which was unity, and participation with God, which is the unction or the move of the Holy Spirit. Well, I want to tell you, I praise God for a church that inspires me to worship. But there's a second thing. I believe a New Testament church instills me in the Word of God. The Bible said, and when they prayed, the place was shaken. And they were assembled together, and they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now listen, and they spoke the Word of God with boldness. I'm not ashamed of the Word of God. I'm not ashamed of the Bible. We live in a world where we've got a bunch of people that want to burn the Bible. We live in a world where a group of people voted to take the Word of God out of the school. And I want to tell you, I'm sorry to say, many churches have taken the Word out of the church. It's not there. It's not preached. If you don't preach the Word of God, what else do you have to preach? It's nothing more than a fairy tale. It's nothing more than a story. But thank God I've got the story of stories to preach about. The early believers preached the Word of God. Peter stood up at Pentecost and took his text from the book of Joel. He illustrated it with a couple of psalms, and he proclaimed the gospel, the cross of the resurrection, 
And he preached the word of the Scripture. He preached the word of the Savior. And he preached the word of salvation. And about 3,000 souls got saved. You can't improve on that, can you? Amen. It'll always work. We're begotten through the word. And we grow by the word. And we experience new life and new experiences through the Word of God. But there's another thing that I want to mention that a New Testament church does. It instills me to worship. It in, in, or inspires me to worship. It instills me to stay in the Word of God. But it invigorates me. It sets me on fire to be a winner for God. I want to tell you, we're not on the side that's lost, ladies and gentlemen. I am a winner in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are too. And don't you ever let the devil tell you that you're a loser. Don't you ever. These verses tell us the early church continued steadfastly in the apostles' teachings and doctrine. They devoted themselves to prayer and fellowship. And let me tell you, people didn't come through the front door of that church and leave out the back as quick as they could. They come to get inspired of God. They come to worship God. When they came into church, faith was exercised. They believed God. Fellowship was experienced. They joined together. Fulfillment was evidence in their life. Did you notice again what the Word of God said? Praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that when we have a New Testament church, that it's going to invigorate, it's going to set our souls afire to reach others. Now let me give you the last thing and I'm finished. I believe that a New Testament church invites me to be a witness, a witness for the glory of God. I want somebody else to know what I've got. I want somebody else to experience what I've experienced. I want them to know about it. You know, if you find a bargain in the story, in the store, you usually tell somebody about it, don't you? So they can go in. If somebody's looking for something, you say, let me tell you where you can go. I know where that will give you a good deal. You see, I have something in my heart that's invited me to tell somebody. These early believers, whenever were witnessing, and the Bible states the Lord added to the church daily as those that should be saved. What was the activity of that church? It was God's plan. God's plan. They say if you're going to be an active church, you can have all sorts of ag organizations in the church. But I want to tell you the activity of every church ought to be to preach the word, win the lost, and give glory to God. That's what ought to happen. The additions came to the church. It's up to us. How many have you invited to the Lord, to the church this week? I believe a healthy church is a growing church. I believe healthy church churches are balanced by ministries, ministering by people who love God and love His church. Oh, you say, I'm just filling this position in church because nobody else won't have it. Give it up today. You don't need to have it if nobody else won't. You need to have it because the Holy Spirit has led you to take it. Because you'll give your best then. I believe that the church, a New Testament church, lives together in love and unity. And we're constantly being filled with the Holy Spirit. Constantly the Holy Spirit is filling our life. We're baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. That puts us in the body of Christ. That puts our names on the Lamb's book of life. But every day, I need a new filling of the Spirit. I need His power to fill me. And I believe a church that's a New Testament church 
makes much of the preaching of the Word of God. I've heard people say, well, I want to go, but I don't want to hear much preaching. Let me tell you, if you love God, you're going to have a desire in your heart to preach the Word of God. I believe we have ministry designed to preserve us, to help new converts to grow, and to continue to exist for those who aren't there yet. That's the reason our church is here. I love my church. Thank God for my church. You get into God's church by the new birth. You come and get into churches like Newtown by being saved, by being baptized, and joining the church. You become a member of the local fellowship called the church. And then you love God and you love His church. I love Him today. I love His church. I love my church. I want you to be a part of this church. If you're not a part of this church, I invite you to come. First of all, if you're not saved, I want you to come today and be saved. God loves you. He died. He gave His Son to die for you. He wants you to be a part of it. Then if your life is out of fellowship with God, I invite you to come and renew your covenant vows with the Lord. And if you're here today and you say, Brother Hare, I prayed about it. I believe God wants me to be a member of Newtown Baptist Church. I invite you to walk down this aisle. Come and we'll receive you into this church. God bless you today. The church instills us to worship. It invites us to be ministers for His glory and honor. Be a part of God's church today by the new birth. Are you glad you're a part of God's church? If you are, say amen. amen. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll take this message today. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll help us. God, help us to appreciate. God, help us to praise you. God, help us to applaud your name. Help us, God, to exalt your name because you've allowed us to be a part of your church. Now, God, there may be somebody here today that's lost. I pray, Holy Spirit, speak to their heart. There may be somebody that's walked away from the will of God. I pray they'll come, renew their covenant vows. God, I pray for that person. Maybe you've inspired them and you've impressed them to be a part of Newtown Baptist Church. I pray they'll be obedient today. God, your will be done. I pray that people will bring their needs to the altar where God could hear them. Because there's just something, Lord. There's something about your name. There's power in your name. God, there's peace in your name. There's presence in your name. There's position in your name. God, I pray today that we'll not let it pass by. Touch us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing. There's something about that name. Will you exalt that name today by, first of all, if you're lost, giving your heart to the Lord? Number two, if you're out of the will of God, will you exalt that name by just rededicating your life? And number three, if God has led you to be a part of Newtown Baptist Church, you come. Let's just exalt something about that name of Jesus as they sing, be obedient to God today.
think about the name of Jesus I think about power I think about presence I think about peace yesterday as I conducted that funeral of that dear man he was a fine Christian man he had been a deacon for years in First Baptist Church in Orlando and he loved God and as I conducted that funeral yesterday, I could look down into the face of his family. In the face of his dear wife, they had peace. There's peace in Jesus Christ. I ask you today, do you have peace in your heart? Oh, I want to tell you, I'm so glad I have the peace of God, the presence of God in my life. And if you don't have it today, I want to invite you to come. Maybe you just come need to pray. Maybe you need to bring a need to before God. Whatever you need to do, you need to join the church. Whatever. As they sing again, will you step out of your seat boldly and come and do it for God's glory? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it today. Jesus, what a name. Amen. Oh, yes. about it. They'll all pass away. But there's something about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In just a moment, I'm going to ask him to sing that one more time. But there's people in this room today with needs in their lives. I'm going to ask the three or four ladies just come. We have a lady bowing right here on the second pew. She has a daughter that's in the hospital in very serious condition. Three or four of you ladies, would you just come and pray over this lady? Aren't you glad today? Aren't you glad there's something about the name of Jesus? Oh, His presence is here. Whatever your need is, why don't you bring it to the Lord this morning? He cares about you. He loves you. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, whoever you are, He cares about you. He loves you today. Whatever you've gone through this week, maybe, maybe somebody's really given you a hard time this week. Jesus loves you. He cares. Sing it again, folks. Will you be obedient to God? There's just something about that name. Master. He's in charge. Amen. Like the fragrance Thank God today. After the rain. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Amen. Kings and kingdoms, they're all going to pass away. But my Jesus, he's everlasting. Amen.
Amen. Praise God. Sing it one more time, folks. I love it. Amen. Worship Him this morning. Give Him praise. Amen. He's our master. He's in charge. He's our savior. Amen. There's a sweetness about him. Thank God. Amen. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Amen. Yes, they're all going to pass away. But He is forever. He's everlasting. Amen. Aren't you glad that you've accepted the name of Jesus as your personal Savior and your personal Lord? Aren't you glad you're saved this morning? If you are, say amen. Praise God today for His presence. Thank God for His power. And I pray that you will not leave this place today with letting Him have control. Thank you for worshiping with us today at Newtown Baptist Church. You always have a warm and friendly welcome to come and be with us in person or worship with us on Facebook. We love people, and we always love new faces. I pray today that everything that we do will be a blessing and an inspiration to your heart. And if we can do anything at any time to help you, please feel free to call our church office. God bless you and keep you as my prayer.